वेलकम दिस इज अनदर टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू थिन सिलेंडर्स एफिशिएंसी ऑफ लॉन्गिट्यूडिनल एंड सरकमफेरेंशियल जॉइंट्स सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी सीइंग अबाउट व्हाट आर जॉइंट्स इन इन सिलेंडर्स व्हाट हैपेंस इफ वी प्रोवाइड द जॉइंट्स एंड व्हाई शुड वी प्रोवाइड द जॉइंट्स सो लेट अस गेट इनटू दैट इन द पिक्चर यू कैन सी अ बॉयलर राइट दैट बॉयलर इज नॉट सीमलेस सीमलेस इज नथिंग बट जॉइंटलेस इट इज वेरी स्मूथ बट इट इज uh connected with lot of plates in order to get the required shape so it is not seamless right so for the large uh, structures like uh, boiler large cylinders like boilers we cannot uh, manufacture them seamless so we call them as seamed because they are jointed joined joined together plates are joined together to re get required shape right so what happens if you provide the joints so we need to provide the joints so why should we provide the joints we have seen and what happens with the joints so in order to provide the joints definitely you have to connect with rivets you have to use the rivets and what happens if you provide the rivets in order to provide them you have to make the holes right that is nothing but you are making holes in the material actually the material is resisting the internal pressure if you make the holes what will happen the area which is resisting the internal pressure internal fluid pressure may decrease then definitely it will have effect on the stresses which are developed longitudinal and circumferential stresses so let us see here you can see the joints it is along the length it is provided longitudinal joint and along the circumference it is circumferential joint circumferential joints and if you see the longitudinal joint that is provided along the length in order to provide the longitudinal joint the plate is made into circular shape and it is connected with rivets right so if the if this joint is not very efficient what will happen this will open up this will open that is nothing but it is affecting the circumference let me say technically this longitudinal joint will have a influence on will affect the circumferential stress or i can say again longitudinal joint will develop the circumferential stresses and circumferential joint if you see so that is to connect many cylinders together in order to increase the length and see if the if this joint is not very efficient what will happen this may sub be separated like this that means it has the effect in length direction or simply i can say the circumferential joint will develop longitudinal stresses so you uh, i hope you have understood the i'll repeat again the longitudinal joint will have circumferential stresses and longitudinal uh, sorry circumferential joint will develop longitudinal stresses so let us see mathematically efficiency of longitudinal joint eta l and efficiency of circumferential joint eta c now actual formulas will be modified as we have seen circumferential stress in the previous video sigma c is equal to pd by 2t and we are adding another term eta l because i said circum the longitudinal joint will develop circumferential stress from this equation i can write sigma c is inversely proportional to eta l that is nothing but circumferential stress is inversely proportional to efficiency of longitudinal joint that means the efficiency of longitudinal joint decreases the circumferential stress will increase that is not a good sign and longitudinal stress you can see sigma l is equal to pd by 4t into efficiency of circumferential joint here and again i can write in this manner sigma l that is a longitudinal joint is inversely proportional to efficiency of circumferential joint the longitudinal stress is directly inversely proportional to efficiency of circumferential joint so let us get into actual problems in application we shall see how we use it so here this is a problem and we have a boiler shell is made of 15 mm thick plates having limiting tensile stress of 120 newton per mm square if the efficiency of longitudinal and circumferential joints are 70% and 30% respectively determine first bit the maximum permissible diameter of the shell for the internal pressure of 2 newton per mm square second bit 
permissible intensity of internal pressure when the shell diameter is 1.5 meter. Let us solve the first bit. Let us write the data given. A boiler shell is made of 15 mm thick plate. So small t is, so we are finding the first bit. So small t is 15 mm. Limiting tensile stress is given as limiting tensile stress. That means we cannot go beyond that. It is limited to 120 Newton per mm square. If the efficiency of longitudinal and circumferential joints and eta L is equal to 70%, eta C is 30%. Right? So in the first bit, what we have, what we were given as the internal pressure is given as 2 Newton per mm square. Small p is given as 2 Newton per mm square. And we need to find out the diameter, the maximum permissible diameter. Right? We have two cases here. Case 1. They have given you the maximum permissible stress. The permissible stress they have given to you. But they have not mentioned whether it is circumferential or longitudinal stress. So let us consider case 1. If sigma max is circumferential stress. Sigma max is circumferential stress. What will happen? So let us see sigma c pd by 2t into efficiency of longitudinal joint. So what we have here, sigma c, 120 Newton per mm square, p, pressure is given as 2 Newton per mm square, diameter we need to find it out by 2 into thickness 15 mm as given into eta l, 70%, that is 70 by 100, that is 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So upon solving you will get the diameter as 1260 mm, that is 1.6 meter. So for that is the first case you have solved. So let us see second case. So if you take the maximum permissible stress as case 2, maximum permissible stress as longitudinal stress, what happens? 120 Newton per mm square. So sigma L we have PD by 40 into efficiency of circumferential joint. Let us see now. Sigma L, 120 Newton per mm square. P is given as 2 Newton per mm square. Diameter is given as, sorry, diameter we need to find it out. By 4 into thickness we have 15 mm and circumferential joint efficiency is 30%, that is 30 by 100, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Now diameter is 1080 mm. Upon solving you will get this, 1.08 meter. So which diameter we have to consider? We have two cases, two diameters. What will happen? So our, our ultimate aim is to decrease the stresses. The stresses should always be less. So whatever the formula it may be, sigma c is equal to pd by some t, some constant into t, into efficiency. Here you can see sigma c is directly proportional to pressure as the pressure increases. Sigma c decrease sorry sigma c also increases sigma c is inversely proportional to diameter also as the diameter increases sigma c also increases that means stresses will also increase or to say practically imagine that larger diameter and diameter and with lesser diameter which is stronger you can simply observe so compared to this this is very strong and this is inversely proportional to thickness. As the thickness of the shell increases, the stresses will decrease. Okay. So we have to consider the lesser one in order to keep the less stresses. So diameter, required diameter, you have to find, uh, take it as 1.08 meter. Right? Or simply I will uh, tell you a trick to remember this. When they ask you to find out maximum diameter, you have to do the two cases and you have to take the minimum value. For maximum, minimum value you have to take. If they ask you to find out the minimum thickness, you have to take the maximum value compared to both cases. So let us, uh, let us go to second bit. Permissible intensity of internal pressure. For the shell diameter, shell diameter if the shell diameter is 1.5 meter, you have to find it, find the 
internal pressure so from the previous uh, here diameter is 1.5 meter they have given to us that is nothing but 1500 mm and we have efficiency of longitudinal joint from the problem 70 percent that is 0 0.7 and efficiency of circumferential joint 30 percent that is 0 0.3 and sigma max we have 120 newton per mm square thickness 15 mm right we have to find out again they have not we have two cases again if sigma max is taken as sigma c case 1 120 newton per mm square uh, that is i will write it again sigma c is equal to pd by 2t into efficiency of longitudinal joint let us substitute all the parameters here 120 is equal to pressure we need to find it out diameter is 1500 mm by 2 into thickness 15 mm we have we were given and efficiency of longitudinal joint is 0 0.7 so upon solving you will get the pressure as 1.68 newton per mm square that is the first case let us see the second case case 2 so here we have to take sigma max if sigma max is taken as sigma l that is 120 newton per mm square let us write the uh, formula again sigma l is equal to pd by 40 into efficiency of circumferential joint let us substitute 120 is equal to p we need to find out diameter is 1500 mm they have given to us 4 into thickness is 15 mm and efficiency of circumferential joint is 0.3 upon solving we will get the pressure as 1.44 newton per mm square so permissible intensity so they have given to us permissible that means maximum intensity so i have to take the minimum value the minimum value com uh, compared to both is 1.44 so pressure the required pressure is or maximum pressure is 1.44 newton per mm square or I say the stress will be directly proportional to pressure as the pressure increases stress will also increase so you have to take the less pressure in order to get less stresses so that is that's it so this is I will give you another homework problem and similar problem is solved in the notes you can download from the description and please solve the question and send it to my mail id Meduri Monica at the rate gmail.com. Similar problem was solved in the notes, and you can download the notes from the link given below. I can see here who is downloading the notes, and please send to uh, send the solution to my mail. Just solve it, take a photograph, and send it to my mail. Hope you do it. Thanks for watching.